welcome to the Zia World Studio Buzz podcast episode 56. My name is Doug and I am coming to you from Albuquerque in the beautiful desert of the land of enchantment from New Mexico. I want to talk to you about wool, about yarn, about all the beautiful things you can make with it and all, all kinds of stuff that I've been up to in the last week. But before I get into that, I wanted to show you what I am wearing today. I have pulled out a little cardigan that I have made a few years ago from a pattern in a German magazine. So it's kind of not so nice of me to talk about this because you're probably not going to be able to make this and to, um, yeah, but, but, uh, well, unless you read German and you have access to old Stricktrends magazines, this won't really help you. However, I wanted to point it out because I, I wanted to show you because this kind of garment is just, whoops, still on the cable. It's just a nice, garment to make that you could even figure out yourself if you get gauge because this is pieced and it's actually just knitted up straight from the front here and a wider back piece and as far as I remember you kind of divide the stitch count that you have on the back is kind of divided in into threes so this is one third and this is the other one and then in the gap in between you pick up stitches along the edge and also on the back of the neckline and you make this beautiful edging which also if you are a little bit experienced you could figure out yourself the sleeves then use the same stitch pattern to pull it all together again. It's kind of really a nice one. The yarn I uh, is a yarn that I got in Germany, but I brought it uh, for you and I wanted to show you because it's just that um, Lana Grossa yarns, I just love them. They're just high quality, great yarns made in Italy. I'm not sponsored. I just buy this stuff every year when I go and see my mother because she has a yarn store which is packed with yarns and they're all this brand. So they have so many different yarns. I still have enough for another one of these. However, this is not really my color. I don't know. I could wear it, right? It's not... I can't think of anything that I have in my wardrobe where this would match, but who knows, you know? It's just not a typical one. I'm more of an orange person or this watery blue or a lot of lime greens. Turquoise, of course, also. But just so you see what this is, it's called a bio soya because it's made with uh, soy silk so uh, essentially it means organic soy and um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the content it's just I want to say it's a little bit nicer than 100% um, cotton and the content would be the soy, cotton, and bamboo. There we go. And also the way it's constructed. It's just not so ropey. It really creates a very nice fabric. like it. And I have plenty for another one of these if I can make myself work with this color. I was, because of what I'm making for my niece right now, I'm going to get to that in a moment, but that's why I was digging into my cotton stash. Yes, 
there is a thing as the cotton stash, which is hardly ever touched, but it exists. And I pulled out a few things, but sadly, as I checked the yardage, it turned out that there will not be enough for one of these in cotton, even though both of the colors that I'm going to show you are really beautiful. This one, a vintage stash, I'm sure this is not available anymore. Also, I got it in Germany, Junghanswolle. I don't even know if they make yarn anymore. And the other one is just one that I had to uh, just admire for a little bit, I guess, because I just adore this color so much. It's this warm yellow variegated yarn. In this case, it really is 100% cotton and it's fairly thick. So I don't even know what I could do with it. I do have one, one more variegated cotton in my stash that my mom, and probably she got me this one too, that, um, that she may have gotten from the uh, flea market in Germany. And um, because, you know, if people don't want that yarn anymore, they give it away for a steal and it's just something that you don't want to pass when you have any knitters in the family so that's where she got this one but four skeins only and the other one that i haven't even pulled out yet i can't recall how much that is but it's very also very colorful so i'm not so sure that that would work for a garment like this uh, that, 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 too much i feel like too much very vari variation in the yarn would be very distracting from the lace pattern this would just about still be okay but not enough yardage i will find another project for that and now I want to tell you about what I, why, why I was digging in the cotton stash because of that top that I am crocheting for my niece in Germany. She had sent me a picture of something that she had seen, a store-bought um, cropped top crocheted from what I could see. I had planned to make it for her when we are in Germany this summer because then I was thinking I can, you know, she's right there. She's going to be able to approve the colors and whatnot. Now I didn't ask her at all about the colors. I'm just making it and it's going to be a surprise for her. So I just hope she's going to like it and I hope it's going to fit. Of course, I have my daughter to help with the fitting even though they're kind of different body types, Bo both slim, but a little bit um, different. I would say also different style, but whatever. I'm going to make it, I'm going to finish it um, the way it is right now. And um, I just really like the colors. The gray is as far as I know something that has a linen content and it has a super nice feel. All my yarns I'm holding double because I did not, you know, it was a little bit too risky to make it with too thin of a yarn where you put in a lot of time and you risk it not fitting in the end. The other yarns are these guys and I think I got all of these in the goodie bags in Winslow so sadly I they came without a tag even though on this one I marked that it's an alpaca blend so that was kind of surprising to me but then again not because it's very soft and I like the softness of alpaca so I probably went for the feel of this and then turns out alpaca, so she's gonna have to pay attention with the washing. And I hope it won't itch her, that too. Third color, probably the same yarn as this one, holding together the same color. And um, I'm 
pretty sure that I will, that I'm kind of ready to end the body at this point that I will start the sleeve opening. I should hold it this way. Uh, and the stripes don't go all the way over the shoulders, but they end kind of here. And then they're framed with an alternate color in the picture that she sent me that was a white, but I decided I'm, I don't want to use a white. It's not, um, not um, I just, all the white that I have is not, doesn't feel good for this. Don't want it to be hard and stiff. And I think the fabric and the look is going to be nice nicely achieved if I use this because it's a very neutral color and also it feels really good. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to have, I'm going to measure this on my daughter to see how far it goes down and to see if I have the length. But then again, I don't have a lot of choices <laughs> because I'm almost at the end of these. I could ask. My yarn store, they're kind of open for pickup. I mean, they're not open, open, but I could pick up a yarn and I would assume that they, that I can get another ball of this green there. The other one, I have quite a bit more yardage as you can see. There's still a lot more substance compared to this guy because <laughs> limits to the green. All right, this is where I am with this guy. I just pick it up from time to time. So another thing that I completely spaced out on when I recorded the last podcast was something that I have in the planning, an idea that I had and um, a pattern that I have kind of swatched for. I let me pull it up and I am talking about this cardigan. I really, really like it. I, it is by a Danish designer named Sanne Fjalland Knitwear. And five projects published in 2016. What the heck? I have no idea why this hasn't been done more, even though maybe there's a print version available somewhere, whatever. I bought the pattern. I looked at it last week and I, I was so disappointed that it's a pattern that's worked from the bottom up. And the reason why I was disappointed is that I want to use my, you may guess it, the hand spun that I had shown you already, this is made, this was spun with the fibers from the Barefoot Spinner purchased in 2018 at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. Absolutely beautiful yarn. Gauge wise, no, not really didn't hit it but that's I can I mean well does that sound familiar I'll be able to figure it out the bigger problem is really that I don't want to go bottom up because I have all this gorgeous yarn and I don't want to have a skein left over that makes no sense really I, I just wouldn't want that so I was thinking that I might be able to figure out how to reverse the knitting direction and how to start from the top 
One thing was, however, I was a little bit concerned because of that lace pattern. You know how some lace patterns, they just have a direction. You don't want them upside down because they would look upside down if you turn them over. This one, so that's what I did. I actually, I, I'm not calling this a swatch, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> but I did start knitting in the lace pattern a little bit and just to see how will this be when I flip it over. And very quickly I thought, oh, that's no big deal. And that's why it didn't, where I decided I'm not even going to invest any more energy in this one. I'm, uh, I'm right now at the point where I have to decide, will I um, really go through the trouble of reversing the pattern? And it could be so simple, but the biggest problem that I have encountered when I looked at it already is that there is no stitch count given for the upper sections, like for the neckline. So what I, it, it says essentially, you know, how there's a kind of like a ribbing that goes along the front edge and then there's the lace and it kind of narrows it it goes together and ends up here somewhere up here and what the pattern says is when you have only one stitch left for the lace pattern do yada 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 and so that doesn't help me at all because that way I'm going to have to really really sit down and I'm going to have to figure out numbers and it's going to be okay. I mean, I know I can do these things. It's just that I feel like right now I am a little bit mentally challenged or <laughs> I don't know. It sounds so terrible to say that about myself, but it's really, I don't, I don't have a ton of brain space to do things like this. I mean, it's also, if you've watched the, a, a few episodes back where I started the Marvelous, I mean, the sweater, the true friend, I really made a mistake somewhere. And I will deal with this uh, probably very shortly and look at it and figure it out before I rip back and re-knit it because it's just too pretty not to. However, um, the, the model is that beautiful shawl with the two color brioche where you have a lot of patterning and whatnot in the and movement in the two color brioche. That's a different story already where I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. But when I continue with that shawl, I will, I want to have kind of like space in my head, if that makes any sense. I think it does. I'm sure that a lot of you out there feel feel a little bit like I do. There's, it's funny, I was in a Zoom, that was super fun yesterday. I was in a Zoom spinning group through our yarn store in Albuquerque here. They have set up Zoom sessions for their knitters, for their customers here. I think every day. I'm not sure about Mondays actually, but the cool thing is that sun on Sundays there used to be a spinning group meetup at the yarn store and now they're doing this with Zoom and we did it yesterday. We were four than five women and it was so fun. I think I'm, I, I never really liked too much going there before because my preferred wheel is really my Lenrum Saxony. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that even on the podcast, but it's a fairly large wheel, so it's hard to get it somewhere. And you maybe, I mean, it was also, you don't, you just don't want to, I mean, I don't even want to think of what would happen if I had it in the car and I had to slam the brakes and it was, would be flying through my car and I got, I damaged it you don't, just don't want to risk that but um yeah 
But so that way I could spin on my favorite wheel and we were chatting, talking, showing each other what we were spinning and it was really fun. That was a nice thing. Mm -hmm. It was really like everybody said and yeah, what I where I was going with that is we were talking about how people deal with the current situation so differently. Some people they fall into depression or for me I can say I really have very limited brain space to tackle complicated things and other people like one of the women that were in that group yesterday thriving loves it and you cannot rationalize that too too much it's just really fascinating and interesting but enough of that okay so you and I we will see what's gonna happen with this baby the yarn from the barefoot spinner Maryland sheep and wool festival I have heard back from Maureen and I am so much hoping to get a chance to shop her fibers before Maryland sheep and wool festival actually the super super cool thing is that I found out yesterday is that there will be a virtual marketplace for Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I don't know. I feel like that might end up in a frenzy, but we shall see. <laughs> okay, that is this. What is next? I have also been working on my husband's socks gotta get some socks done for that sweet man of mine you have seen these before and I had I think I was here last time I showed these the cool thing that was one of a kind colorway this is my yarn the Taos uh, superwash Corydale nylon blend but it's so cool um, that there is a there is a hint of purple in this and you just don't see it anymore when you have when you're knitting it and also already once I have wound the ball once I had wound the ball excuse me for one second colors are just funny that's the way it is I am on the second sock and I just started the heel yeah heel flap I should say I always do my socks with uh, 2.5 millimeter needles and I work a heel flap and a gusset tried the toe up tried the two at a time tried the magic loop but I'm a DPN girl yeah. But I'm glad I tried it. What's next? The absolutely wonderful and stunning and amazing hap that I am working on. Credits all to the wonderful designer Gudrun Johnston. Thank you for coming out with such a beautiful pattern so inspiring that I am on my second one and if you have been here for a while you will remember and you will know that I am the proud owner of a half stretcher which was gifted to me from a friend I mean I've talked about this so much you're probably like shut up woman we've heard this plenty of times but that's just the way it is. I, I'm just thrilled. So I am right now, as you can see, on the edge of my hat. I've made the first turn. So one side is done. But oh, I tell you, this is slow business, as you can imagine. But it's fine. I am using five millimeter needles and I the yarn I use and I want to mention that specifically in regards to this one because this is a local New Mexican 
Shetland wool. I purchased this almost a year ago at um, the Fiber Crawl, I believe, at the yarn store down in Knob Hill from a local farm in the East Mountains. And they have, I don't know, I'm not sure if they have other sheep, but they have mainly Shetlands. I hope I'm not saying that wrong now. Mm, yep registered Shetland sheep it says on their card so I'm pulling out I had my uh, that was my spinning control card so I put my my singles here and also a little bit of the plied yarn that I was starting off with I know it changes in between sometimes and it changed a little bit in between even though I had a control card, but nothing that was really a problem. And the, the name of the place is Kilari's Critters. And like I said, they're in the East Mountains and you can find them, I believe on Facebook. The fibers I got from them ready to spin so that was nothing that i worked on no no not a fleece and i cannot recall where they had it processed i want to say a mill fiber mill in colorado maybe not quite sure so the skein that i'm showing you right now is the um that's the last skein i have i have knitted up all the small bits that I had and I'm gonna finish that border lace the applied lace with this skein which should hopefully be plenty if not I have a problem <laughs> but I think I'm gonna be fine I wanted to sh talk again just for a moment about all of these yarns I have gotten some of them from my hand spun leftover bin and also some of these were sample spun yarns i had a custom order for rolex last year last fall winter and actually my mom took that to germany that was kind of cool and so I had spun a small amount of that to see how it spins. And because the, the uh, friend who ordered them, she's a, a new spinner. So I really wanted to make sure that it's suitable and it spins up nicely and it drafts nicely and it doesn't, you know, go out of your hand. And I just wanted to make sure. So I got a, a mini skein from that. And so that's in there, good memories. and. A lot of the blue here, those were sample spun mini skeins from hand uh, uh, drum carded bats and uh, drum carded Rolex. I mean, Rolex that I pulled off my drum carder. The dark brown out here, I love. I was, at some point, I was a little bit uncertain about it because if you believe it or not i drum carded a bat with yellow because i felt like this edge needs yellow but the yellow is really kind of not so very visible so it really got mainly brown i can't recall what the brown was what kind of fiber could have been shetland too i mean it wasn't i didn't one or was not that important that I wanted it felt like I need to take note or anything but um, I was uncertain about the strong color you know that was so dark but in the end I really like it because that that red down there also stands out a lot so that's fine and um, the blue that's in here was from our local fiber mill Mora in Mora. It's, it's alpaca that I purchased from them at Fiber Arts Fiesta. 
last May. Yes. Yeah, here you see a little more yellow. Yeah. I'm excited. So I really I'm looking forward to this, even though I have to say that yesterday I thought, hmm, when I finished this side, I thought that's not as big as I thought. Hmm. So it takes a long time. So I'm going to be I'm, I'm curious to see how much I bet I can block out size two. And but also I need to uh, educate myself and figure out how do you even dress a hap stretcher? How do you put your hap on the hap stretcher? I have no clue. I'm going to have to do some research. I'll find out and then I'll tell you all about it. So that was my hap where I am getting towards the end, as you can see, two full sides and about three quarters of one side that I still have to do. I think I can already talk about spinning and I you may have seen the basket with the washed fibers. That was the fleece that I talked about that I purchased from Cactus Hill Farm in Colorado where I started washing it and I have waited for a for the I don't know what it's called the thing to mount it on the table to make the combing easier did I just call these cards it's not they're not cards they're wool combs and uh even though, so I will, I've filmed a little bit of a footage uh, on how I combed just one amount with the combs mounted to the table. And I <laughs> made a lot of rookie mistakes, but I'm still gonna put in that, um, the, uh, I'm still going to put it in there and um, uh, for you at the end so you can see a little bit about that process even though I'm not a pro and I thought that's just kind of the fun of it because we don't need to do these things perfect we still can um, share them so we can all learn together and that's what's important I my two rookie mistakes were that I mounted on a on a piece of furniture that has a rounded edge not a good idea it really bounced the other mistake that I made was that that piece of furniture has wheels what am I thinking I apply a lot of force so what happens is if there's resistance it's not it doesn't work but my table rolls away and i was kind of like oh my goodness i felt like i'm in the, making a funny funny movie there but whatever I'm, i'll be getting there i'll be getting there i'll i'll keep working on it and the the cool thing is um also for the dizzing off uh the spinning top that did not work very well because yet again my the the curved edge made my if the, it didn't keep the comb steady on the surface but at this point I do not know if Lisa watches but I wanted to say that the soulful spinner I talked about her last time and I called her Sarah oh my gosh I was so embarrassed because her, that's not her name Lisa is her name and she is on YouTube and she has some fantastic videos up about her wool combing which were incredibly helpful for me now that I got into this so and in fact um, that um, little spinning top that I pulled off that first batch I spun it when I was talking to the spinners on Zoom yesterday and I am just incredibly delighted about this 
little mini skein that I got. I'm gonna roll it up so I can show you a little bit better. I adore this so much. It has a kind of a pearly texture. It's so beautiful. And I wanted to show you because I've when we looked at the fleece you saw last time you saw that there is a lot of crimp in the fibers. Now look at this. So much bounce in this yarn. It's just wonderful. So I can't wait just to make a little swatch to knit this up a little bit and to see how it looks like when you knit with it. It's probably um, again lace weight where I'm gonna need super skinny needles like the other yarn that I want to tell you about that I spun up. I showed you two skeins um, last time. If you remember, it was um, some Blue Face Lester BFL that I also had gotten at Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. And for everybody who wants to maybe look for nice fibers, um, I, I looked up where this came from. It's from a farm that's called Pucker brush farm. I think pucker brush in one word, if I'm not completely mistaken. And I am done with my yarn. Ah, sorry, tags are in the way. I'm telling you, this stuff makes me so incredibly happy. There is only one thing that I'm not too thrilled about, which is essentially a mistake that I made. And you see that it's marked on both sides just to draw my attention to it. And it's that this skein is the one that has, that is slightly heavier. So what you do when you spin is, or I should say, when you ply, I mean, you, you fill up your bobbins. This is a two ply and I just enjoy spinning fine yarns. What happened was apparently I started off ever so slightly thicker. So I filled the, bod the bobbin and it just got, I got thinner as I spun. And when I took off the very last of the yarns and plied them, I could already feel that, well, I thought, wait a second, this is really heavier. I, c I could feel because when you have just one thread, it's hard to tell. But if you ever need to compare weights of yarns, here is the way to do it. I'm going to show you if this uh, just pretend this is one yarn. OK, one thread of yarn. What you do is hold on. You will hook it into the yarn that you want to compare it with and you may not feel the difference as a in the singles yarn if you compare and you feel this one and this one but when you double it you're like heck yes this orange yarn is thicker than the gray and this is essentially the effect that I had when I plied I felt I was I was plying I was finishing with the one skein and as I started the very last bits of the of the plying I could tell this is thicker it felt thicker in my hand between my fingers 
but it's okay it it can happen and i mean it's always either i use it for something different or i'm gonna ignore it <laughs> but i wanted to tell you how much i got in terms of yardage i would call this a a light fingering yarn so i got 108 grams 590 yards 105 grams 560 yards same thing ever so slightly heavier but th that is not significant compared to this that's that won't matter so much here i have 121 grams with uh, 610 yards this little boo-boo has 25 grams and 115 yards and then this last one slightly thicker has 57 grams 240 yards so it should be um it should be around at least 500 and wait a minute um 200 and close to 300 yards to really be a nice match but i can live with it that's okay i'll figure it out i mean i'm that's why you measure yardage so you know when you knit with it and you're not not like oh darn why what's gonna what's happening here right now because then you're i mean now when i plan i can plan for something that does maybe not require the full yardage that i have here but i have this this one as an extra emergency whatever for ribbing or something yeah that was my spinning and the funny thing is that i already <laughs> i already lined up the next thing i have i knew that i have very fine fibers that i had those in the house in my spinning stash and there is a blend with yak which i am really looking forward to however i thought i had a very colorful blend of fibers with a very bright pink and and i just i, I thought hmm, maybe i remembered wrong maybe i gave it away or something but i couldn't find it and i just just a minute ago before i started filming i was looking into bin and i thought hmm, let's take a look at this maybe i can work with this now and sure enough in this bin that had very old spinning stash that's where i found that ball of fiber that i had that i thought i did <laughs> and this is what happens when you don't empty the things that you do not need anymore on your phone storage is full and shuts you off so that's what happened sorry about that but the good thing is now i can show you the spinning fibers that i was talking about ah, got stuck to something Hold on. Here it is. I love it. So this one now, I, I feel like I once spun a sample, but I have no idea where I put it. This was from Maggie's Farm. Maggie's Farm. No card, but a note. That's not bad, right? So that's going to be next, I think. I'm fairly certain. And the funny thing is, you know how I say I don't do certain colors? And then this happens. Totally reminded me of this, even though this has a lot of the green in it, but the pink in there. Yeah. <laughs> funny. All right. 
So that's going to be next on the wheel, I think. And I hope I'm not going to spin it lace again or light fingering. You can't all. I'm, I'm never going to be able to knit up everything I spin if it's always so thin. But then <laughs> I also maybe shouldn't start spinning thinking not so thin not so thin because then maybe i will get thinner again like i did with the last with the bfl okay you shall see and you i will keep you posted about this so next and last thing before i talk about the yarns that are currently in the shop is my rug hooking so it was kind of fun. This is where I keep my, my one of my projects and the, my tools. And the cool thing is that I, when I recorded the German podcast, it was so fun. I, it's not a technique that is known in Europe. So it was really fun and interesting to talk about it. Um, for the German speaking folks in Europe. I think everybody in America should know what it is, right? Am I, am I right? Okay, so let me reach down to grab something. So the project that is in that container that I just told you is a little rug or a mat that I am making from this drawing of my daughter's. I sadly do not know when she did this, but definitely very small. And it's just so cute. So, so I thought I will have to make her a mat where she can put her miniature Christmas tree on or just put it on a table when she has her own household sometime later. And I, um, I shouldn't even claim, shouldn't even pretend that I've been hooking because I have not. However, what made me pull out my rug hooking stuff was that I am in, the, I am in the Adobe Woolads Guild, which is our local rug hooking guild, and we did a Zoom hook in last uh, Friday. So we with a group of, I think we were nine or so people f came together, and most of them hooked. I knitted, and I thought I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to grab this chance, and I'm going to hook again. And I pulled out my stuff. I put the Put the little Rudolph on the frame and this is where I am right now. I have dyed this blue background and I can show you how it looks like. I have a large amount of this which should be enough and my hook that I use most of the time looks like this Oops. and other hooks that I own are actually this guy which used to be my daughter's she hooked for a while and then I have this very fat one, which is actually my favorite tool in terms of the beauty of the tool. And that's probably easy to understand why. Look at this beautiful wood. And I just love the feel of the wood in the hand and how it, you know, it lays in your palm when you work with it. Usually, however, too fat. Then, of course, you have these wonderful scissors. These are still have my daughter's feet because she doesn't hook anymore, sadly. Anything else in here that you need to see? No. Oh, I made, this is kind of fun. 
I made myself a felted yarn bowl um, where I put my little ends in and I made up the pattern. I think I started off with a square and then increased stitches and decreased and then whip stitched the edge down that was double so that's a little thicker a little more sturdy yeah so that's all my noodles for died about November 2017 that's when I started this so I have a large piece I have a nice cutter that's up all the time in the house in my studio for cutting my strips so when i when i showed this on the german podcast i was um i was talking about how i have let me think i, I said i have three projects which then instantly after i said it i realized that's not true i have four actually it's not even quite four but one of them is which is has two parts that i counted as the fourth one and but i brought it to you because i was talking about how i want to show things to you show them on the podcast so i can actually I feel inspired to pick them up again because I mean I love everything that I start working on every project that I do but um, sometimes it's just it falls asleep somehow but if you pull it out and you show it then you get hopefully excited again and you start working on it more regularly again and the other project which is actually going to be prioritized for and I'm, I'm going to tell you why in a moment um, that um, it lives in this bag i hope this is not too not too noisy for you i'm sorry and i have been Excuse me for one moment. My mom needs to talk to me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> We've been filming way too many podcasts. I need more of your attention. I'm back. <laughs> Kids, seriously. Okay, so I am. So I showed you the sign, and it says "Friendship Rug, Amy." We have met when we were pregnant with our oldest child and our firstborn boys we met in pregnancy yoga well wait a minute it wasn't called that way what was it called can't recall now whatever but um then she moved away and she's since lived in Virginia but we've been in touch through the years in fact every time when we go to Maryland we have to meet her and her family two kids two grown kids and um, husband of course and so mm, she was actually the one who told me you will love New Mexico and which came so totally true because I feel so at home here and it's just yeah so she was completely right and um, but the reason I'm I really feel like I have to talk about her is because she is the reason why I started rug hooking because many years ago she showed it to me 
and she was working on a rug and I had never seen the technique but being the daughter, daughter of my mother and uh, all the other women in our family I was totally intrigued by this technique and I wanted to learn more so but we had only visited um, so I could not I mean there was no way in t to learn it as things were but then when I, when we came here and I went to Fiber Arts Fiesta for the very first time which by the way if you don't know it happens only every two years so at Fiber Arts Fiesta all the guilds present the work of their members and also as a non-guild member you can enter whatever you have done into the show and but also you can sign up for classes like say oh hey i am interested in doll making in machine knitting in rug hooking you can sign up for a class and that's what i did many years ago probably already i would say seven or maybe even nine years ago and it took a while but then i got an email which informed me about a class and that's how i started learning and i um, also I did get my daughter involved for a little while and we um yeah and i took those classes and i met all the i met other women who were starting um, to learn rug hooking and then i i joined the guild and i have been a guild member ever since so it's kind of special that through my friend amy I got into rug hooking and I really I, I like it even though right now with the dyeing for Zia Wools I'm not that actively hooking that much anymore but still I feel like I'm a rug hooker rug hooker now my friend started this amazing project for the two of us she started friendship rugs so the the thing is that we mail two pieces, two rugs, back and forth. Each one of us works on it for a little while and adds something of her own design to the rugs and then it gets mailed back to the other one who adds some more. And in the end, each one of us is gonna have a rug which is, is gonna be our friendship rug. So my friend, um, she started this and I think the last time she sent this to me was probably, ooh, I'm not going to lie, I think it could have been as long ago as four years. I Sadly, I did not keep track. Or maybe that's a good thing because I'd be so horribly embarrassed about keeping those friendship rugs that long in my house. But here it is. Now, I'm not quite sure why one of them has two things on it and the other one has only one. Ah, you are going to know exactly who did what design element. <laughs> uh, and this is one of them and this is the other one. So I have to say that I really so she did the peace and the beauty elements and i did the big heart so i'm thinking i wrecked i i, I kind of wrecked my brain a little bit on what to add next and i could not really come up with anything and i thought but then I thought, whatever, I'm just going to do some background, so like a wave or something. But definitely these will be next. And I wonder if that's not even something that I drew already, this wave, but I can't remember. That's terrible. Well, I know she watched my podcast 
sometimes so hopefully she's not watching now even though she may be bored at home just like everybody else so well Amy if you see this this is going to be next okay I'm going to work on these and then I'm going to send them to you before while we're still in this crazy situation so you also have a lot of time to continue working on it so that will be next even though i put the rudolph on the frame friendship rugs will be next because i've neglected them for too too long so let me put this away and next is going to be a little bit of shop news i'm going to make some room here so what i have to say about the shop zia wools um, which is on etsy right now is that i have because i am at home and i have a lot of time i've been putting a lot of yarns in the shop there's still spinning fiber in the shop and but I'm adding a lot of yarns there was never this much yarn in the shop as right now and I'm still not done what I will be adding next is my worsted weight the Duke and so far of that yarn I've added one colorway that's already in the shop and that is the beekeeper's daughter and then i have added all the cozy my dk yarns they're all in the shop now and i but i brought only a small selection of my yarns this beautiful blue with a grayish undertone is a lucky dog of one of a kind then we have all of these like i said on cozy and there's more in the shop this is latte macchiato hard to t to photograph but it shows very pretty the way it is here this is one that i really love it's called fresh and if you see this yellow tie that's how i get it from my supplier they mark their different bases with a colored thread here beautiful fighter boots and lace and la posada which almost was the goodie bag yarn for the knitting retreat in winslow but then it ended up being too much like what we had last year so i changed my mind so those are the cozies that i pulled out to show you there's a lot more in the shop also i think at least one sweater quantity and then uh, reach over and grab the roadrunner because i just could not decide on which ones to bring so i brought them all i promise i will be quick almost Irish lucky dog which is a one-of-a-kind yarn so the the my lucky dogs are always the ones that only exist once and cannot be repeated this one also lucky dog but there are some in there which ma would make such an amazing combo look at these this is again boots and lace on my roadrunner singles ah i'm such a sucker for tonals 
like kind of like not too too high contrast love these and this one let's see i'm not i'm making sure i'm telling you the right name i have so many colorways <laughs> sometimes i forget this one is arroyo and oh this is a one of a kind i have two of this beautiful shades of blue and green another one of a kind only one available i think of this one water world as far as i know there's two in the shop and if you don't know everything is marked down right now to bring to make beautiful hand dyed yarns a little bit more affordable and to bring a little bit of comfort to the world because of what's going on i don't need to say it loud right this is one of my favorites, Boomtown. Yet again, Boomtown with this boom combination. Would love it. Yes. Or also Boomtown and Waterworld. Then there is Puppet, one of these still in the shop would be great with uh, think pink again that's kind of me it's not for everybody when they're kind of like almost i just love it when one colorway picks up a, the the other color with that when it's more of a solid and so again puppet and think pink i think think pink i should have four in the shop then there is Purple Rain. I lost my heart in Winslow, the last one of these on a fingering yarn. And then there's also the La Posada, I didn't show you this on this base, did I? I hope I'm not repeating myself. Love it. It would work with the I Lost My Heart in Winslow, but I also think this is an amazing combination as well as these two boots and lace i lost my heart in winslow i think i've pulled them all out yes and if you've been watching until now i thank you for that Stay tuned for the video about the wool combing, how I got to that little um, wool top that I spun up for the mini skein. And I hope you're going to stay well. I hope this finds you healthy and I hope you will stay healthy. And until I see you again, I wish you happy, happy knitting. Bye.